morning all and today I'm looking again at the Mark II wearable display and uh, today I want to talk particularly about this which is the LiPo battery stack which consists of three components the LiPo, uh, the blue charger board which is this one up here and the little red LiPo fuel gauge which is that board there. Now I've made a change to the arrangement, the layout of uh, this thing. Um, what I had to do was connect the LiPo directly to the B plus and B minus, the battery positive and battery negative connections on the charger board. And the other thing I've done is I've flipped the fuel gauge upside down because I noticed that this connector fits quite neatly in the cutout, the little cutout section of the charger board. And there is another reason why I flipped the fuel gauge upside down and I'll explain that a bit later on. So I'm just charging the LiPo at the moment using the charger board. I've just plugged in a five volt power bank. But what I'll do now is I'll go through these boards in turn and show uh, what they are and where you can get them. So the first thing is this TP4056 charger board. Now this is the new type which has the battery protection components on the board. DW01 battery protection IC and this chip here which is missing because when I hot glued these two boards together uh, the hot glue ripped this chip off but it's the 8205 dual MOSFET switch and that's what switches the battery to these output connections uh, when the LiPo has enough voltage and disconnects it when the voltage drops too low. Now if you type TP4056 into eBay you get lots of this board which uh, is the older board that has the mini USB connector and just the chip and a couple of LEDs but I wanted the board with the battery protection components because my LiPo is unprotected. So I've done a search for lithium charger uh, from items for sale from Alice Womano 1983 otherwise known as TX Hang Electronics and we have the original board there but scrolling down a bit there's the new board one off for $1.50 two pieces for $2.71 or five pieces for $5.90 and I'll put a link to this item in the description. Now for a small cell like this 240 milliamp hour LiPo you have to change the charge current on this board and that means removing resistor R3. Now it's a little surface mount resistor and if you heat it up enough it'll just melt both ends and fall off and then you need to put on a higher value resistor for a lower current for charging the LiPo. And for 130 milliamps, I'm using a 10K resistor and it's soldered between the pad on the board which goes to the IC pin two and to the ground connection, the negative connection on the input socket. So the next item is the Max 17043 LiPo fuel gauge, this little board here. And you can see on the back you've got the SparkFun logo and it says fuel gauge. And here's that item on eBay. I got it uh, for £2.38 but there's also 99p postage and that's from seller Lakey X 101 Now originally I had the LiPo fuel gauge mounted on top of the TP4056 charger board like this but it then occurred to me that if I flip this the other way around the connector on the fuel gauge can sit in that little cutout on the charger board like so. So if I turn it this way up you can see that the charger board cutout sits on that little step like that. And by doing that you can get these two boards much closer together. So that's how I've mounted them on this new stack and you can see that I've also squirted some hot glue down between the boards to hold them together and then also run these wires up from the positive and negative connections on the fuel gauge back to the charger board. Now these points on the charger board are out negative and out positive so this is power coming from the LiPo through the battery protection components and then up these two wires into the fuel gauge and that means now that the connector 
on the fuel gauge works as a power outlet. So by making up a suitable cable to connect between the LiPo battery stack and the wearable device, we can plug that into the power outlet of the fuel gauge and on comes the display. Now at the moment there's no data on the display because the transmitter switched off so I'm just going to switch it on and immediately that starts up and I3, the bottom field, starts incrementing from 1 and counting up. Now the other thing that uh, you may have noticed and you certainly would have noticed it in the uh, previous video is that at the moment the LiPo uh, battery charge percentage is showing as 256% and the LiPo's voltage is showing as 5 volts so they're both nonsense information and that's because at the moment I haven't connected the I squared C. Now I squared C you can see quite easily on here, let's turn it around, is on these two pins here SDA and SCL and they need to connect to pins A4 and A5 on the Pro Mini which are these two pins here and in fact if I flip this over you can see A4 and A5 on the back of the Pro Mini circuit board. So this is really the main reason why I flipped this fuel gauge board upside down like this because it just so happens that I squared C on the fuel gauge and I squared C on the Pro Mini connect together like that. And now we have LiPo fuel gauge information 62.4% battery level 3.92 volts. So with the new thinner charger board and LiPo fuel gauge sandwich and the convenient way that they connect uh, on A4 and A5 for the I squared C you can see how this is starting to become quite a small, thin arrangement. Now, and it may be necessary not to have the LiPo Velcro to the back of the charger board. In fact, it probably be more sense now to sit it sort of there above that so that when the display is folded round to the back here, we've got the minimum amount of thickness of this sandwich between the Pro Mini here and the display which will be up this side. Now in part one of this video I was having a lot of trouble with this display, it kept cutting out and in the end I discovered that um, what was making it cut out was when I touched this connector here on the back. Um, now I thought initially it was something due to induced signals or something like that but actually it was much simpler than that. It was these soldered connections, so I just had to touch all of these uh, flexible PCB connections with a soldering iron and now it's completely rock solid. And there's a second problem with this particular display. Uh, there are only six connections along here and you notice that what's missing is the reset pin. So it's not actually possible to reset this display in hardware. When you press the Pro Mini reset button the display doesn't reset and in fact strange things happen. I'll do it. Oh, okay, strange things don't always happen. But um, the SSD1306 chip that drives this display also doesn't have a reset command. So there's actually no way to reset this display other than removing the power. So I've just gone and ordered another 1.3 inch OLED. Now this one has along the top, uh, on the right hand side, reset and data command which is different to mine, which has chip select and data command. So that'll be fun playing with that new display. So that's where I am with the wearable data display. Now of course I'm going to shorten this cable, it doesn't need to be that long. And the other thing I need to do, you can see from the display, it's sort of the LiPo information is kind of flicking on and off because I need to solder the I squared C connections, the A4 and A5 connections.